Okay, to start the video, I am going to, or the skill, I will check the order, um, identify my patient with two identifiers, asking his name and date of birth. Then I'm going to make sure that there's signed consent and um, requisition form and compatibility. I'm going to get a second nurse to identify on the blood bag that there is the client's correct name, identification number, blood type, RH factor, blood donor name, or blood donor identification number, excuse me, um, and expiration date. Once I've done that, I'm going to perform hand hygiene and check my tubing and make sure that there is a filter, and there is. So then I'm going to don clean gloves. Once I've got my clean gloves on, I'm going to make sure that every clamp is shut completely on my tubing. And all of them are. So then I am going to take my, sorry, it's a little bit tangled. Then I'm going to spike the saline bag. And hang it. Then I'm going to um, prime my tubing by opening the clamp on the top and the clamp on the bottom. And then I'm going to actually this one can stay close for a moment. I'm going to fill my drip chamber three quarters of the way full, or I'm just going to make sure that the entire filter is covered, which it is. Then I'm going to open the clamp and I'm going to show the saline going through then I'm going to clamp and attach to my the IV catheter of the IV once it is attached I'm going to make sure that it runs through all the way by un clamping both and you can observe the dripping once I've done that I'm gonna make sure I adjust the flow rate to the prescribed flow rate then I'm going to prepare my blood bag by um, inverting it gently and I'm going to spike the blood bag And then hang the blood back. Then I'm going to clamp the upper port and I'm going to unclamp the blood bag port. And then I'm going to observe and make sure the blood flows through the entire tubing. It's going to go through the drip chamber and then it's going to go through the saline tubing as well. And once it does that, I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So it's gone all the way through the tubing and it's going into the IV and you can see the blood dripping through. So it is completely through the entire tubing. Now that I've done that, I am going to allow the infusion to continue, but I'm pausing it for this purpose, but I would allow it to continue. And then I'm going to inform my patient that I would be staying with them for the next 15 minutes, which is the first 15 minutes of the infusion to monitor for any adverse reaction, which would be something like nausea, chills, vomiting, uh, tachycardia, rash, anything like that. Um, this would indicate that they are not compatible with the blood or they're having an allergic reaction or something like that. And I would need to stop the transfusion immediately. I would inform the patient of this and after the 15 minutes was up, I would be able to go.